There we go. Recording in progress. And we're live. We should all laugh like I told a really funny joke. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, all right. right. Thank you, guys. Yeah. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. This is for you people that are not watching it uh, live as well. You're going to obviously watch this recording. Uh, this is our free Neopad clinic. It's a free Neopad clinic. Uh, the price is right. We're going to talk about Neopads. Uh, I'm going to talk about, well, Neopads, some installation tips, um, some other tips and tricks that you can, you know, do with Neopads. Rich is going to talk about some things as well. Your mic is turned on, right? Yes. Okay. Check good. one, two. Yes. Okay. I we all, sorry to interrupt. Uh, let me just go ahead and mute you real quick. Uh, no, we also have Leroy here. He is in, uh, the square there. He's got the, the Wilmington saxophone, the world's largest Wilmington alto behind him. It's, um, the, it's the sub contrabass Wilmington. There you go. So that Leroy's going to talk. Yeah. Introduce himself. <laughs> and if you guys have any questions to make orders, these two are the guys <laughs> that you're going to want to want to contact as far as making okay. orders, either Leroy or Rich. Uh, and we'll probably go ahead and put both of their email addresses within this chat window. Um, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and work on doing that now. Uh, that way you guys have it. And this is another great way if you guys have questions as I'm doing any kind of presentation, um, you can use this chat feature. Uh, okay, I think I spelled it right. Wow. Um, so that's my email address. Rich, I'm going to write yours in as well. That's okay. Yeah, sure. At music, medic. And Leroy, I'm going to write yours in as well. Boom. There you cool. go. So if you guys have any questions, you can also use this chat feature as I'm, uh, you know, demonstrating and doing things. And what I'll do is I'll just look up and, and answer it with the earliest convenient time. You also have a raise your hand feature, I, I believe. Um, you're welcome to do that. Let's see. Uh, oh, there are some reactions, too. So if you think I do a really good job, you can do that. So Ryan, Ryan Walker thinks <laughs> I, sh I should get a clap. Thank okay. you, Ryan. Um, so you can use that. Chat feature is probably the best if you have questions as we're doing this. At the end, assuming we have time, uh, we can do a live uh, question and answer uh, where you can you know, put your video on, put your microphone on, and we can actually just talk like humans uh, rather than typing. So, Rich, you want to talk to him a little bit about yeah. stuff before I bore them to death? Yeah, thank you guys so much for showing up, and thank you for coming to our free Neopads clinic. Ryan, thank you so much for You're being welcome. our instructor today. Uh, I do have a special deal for you guys. Neopad sets are currently on sale uh, for the month of December. So that's my deal number one. So if you have a, if you get done with this tutorial class clinic and you are hot to buy a pad set, they're already on sale. So go ahead and buy a pad set. They're 20% off on the website right now, all the way up until the 21st. And then I have two other uh, little deals for you. Uh, the second one is if you are ordering in single sizes or in quantity, you'll be able to get 20% off any of the Neopads. Accru is it accoutrement? Yeah. Accoutrement. Nice. <laughs> all right. So any of the stuff that is included with Neopads, that's going to be uh, the pads themselves or any of the spuds. So you get 20% off, say, if you order, you got a horn, but you need to order individual sizes, I'll get you 20% uh, off that. And then I also have an extra special deal, 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 which is if you order by the end of the day, tomorrow, Friday, the 8th, I will get you 30% off. And all you have to do is send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H at musicmedic.com. And I'll get you 30% off the way. There's two ways to do that. You can put your order in through the website and, call, uh, and just put it in and pay for your order. And then I will go ahead and just get you a, a refund in the form of that 30% if you order by the end of the day tomorrow. And then if you try to be tricky and you get a pad set and you get single pads, pad sets already discounted. So I'll give you your discount on the single pads. Uh, and then the other way to place the order. So I've kind of went out of order there. So first way, put your order in and I'll get you a refund uh, on the back end. And then the other way, if you need to ask me questions or anything like that, you can just put your order in and select pay with money order in checkout. That's going to let you place an order without paying. And then if you want to add an item or if you forgot something, you can say, hey, Rich, here's my order number. Uh, I want to go ahead and get the, the Neopads Clinic discount. Can you put this through? 
and I'll add your discount in and then send you a, a electronic money request. So you have a couple things to remember. You get 20% off pad sets all this month of December on Neopads. You get 20% off any Neopad order from now until the end of the month, but you got to send me an email. And then the third one is if you order by the end of the day tomorrow, Friday the 8th, you can have 30% off of your Neopad. So if you order a pad set by tomorrow, and you, you can get an extra 10% off. So you get 30% off. So that's actually an extra, extra Bonus, Extra. bonus. It's very good. So if you have any questions, and I, if you, obviously if you're here, you're curious about these. So I would encourage you to take advantage of uh, the smoke and hot deal for tomorrow. Uh, it's also part of Hanukkah. So it's kind of like a little Hanukkah right. deal, holiday season thing. And then you also have 20% off all of the Neopads for the rest of the month. So thank right. you guys so much for being here. And I'm probably just going to you're, I mean, you're, yeah, you're welcome to hang out behind the scenes. You're welcome to go get out of here, you know, go have a Coke and a smile. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's completely up to you. Uh, Leroy is, yes. is in our window as well. Leroy, did you want to uh, uh, introduce yourself or uh, maybe tell a joke or do you have like a special skill that you could tell us about? No, just just introduce yourself real quick. My special skill is I can put people to sleep by talking. So that's my special skill. It's working. <laughs> yes, I know. Anyway, no, uh, but I just wanted to say thank you guys for signing up for this course, uh, showing interest in our Neopads that are awesome. I know I know they're like a new, it's a new way to put stuff in and it might scare people, but once Ryan goes over everything, hopefully that'll um, kind of put your mind at ease, give you a little more insight to what actually is going on with the pads. Um, and thanks, Rich, for doing the whole sales thing, getting all that out, and hopefully that'll, hopefully that'll help with everything. So, that's awesome. There are two things that I wanted to add to Rich's awesome list of stuff already. Um, one, um, Ryan is going to be doing a more extensive. Oh, that's right. Neopad have... class uh, at the Napert facility in May. Yes. So, so if so if so if you're watching this video and you have other questions or if you want to dive even more deep into this kind of thing, go on Napert's website. They have everything there. Um, I'm not sure if the signup is available yet, but it will be soon. So we're there. There's some final finalization of stuff that's happening, but that is that will be happening. Thank you, Ryan. Yep. Um, and there are it is the the course instead of four days, it's only two, and there's yep. two sessions. And there's two sessions. So yep. be on the look for that. Be on the lookout for that, and check that out. The other thing that I wanted to mention to everybody is, especially if you're local, especially anywhere near Wilmington. The SmackDown is coming down in February. Please attend. It is awesome. Check out the link. Uh, I should have put the link on there. I see Ryan typing, so I think he'll... Uh, I'm, I'm just... Oh, you know what? No, I got it right here. SmackDown! I got it right here. February. February. Okay, so there's the there's the web link. Go ahead and click on that. Thank you. Um, there's going to be great clinicians, great, great players. We're going to be offering food, drinks, adult beverages for people that can drink adult beverages and all kinds of great saxophone things. And, and if you don't have a chance to see uh, Neopads in person before that, you have a chance to see the pads in person here at our facility as well. So other than that, I think Ryan can have the floor and I think he'll be able to do some awesome stuff. Awesome. Thank you, Leroy. Thank Thanks, you. Thank Leroy. you. Perfect. Yeah, because they, if they come to the SmackDown, they can also play Neo padded. You can. Yeah, you can yes. play. In fact, if you want, you can play this horn right here, which is I'll be using for a demo. This is our Wilmington Alto. This thing has Neo pads in it. Uh, well, except for a few pads, uh, which I will do live in person. Um, so, yeah, so we'll, they can play that. And we have a couple other horns that have Neo pads in them. And, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Okay. Cool. cool. Awesome. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, Leroy. Thank Let me you. go ahead and mute you. Oh, he unmuted himself. This guy is on top of things. All right, here we are talking about Neopads. First thing I'm going to do is um, I'm not going to assume that everybody is familiar with how a traditional saxophone pad goes into a saxophone. So I'm going to just kind of briefly go over that. Um, just so we all kind of have a, a base knowledge uh, and we can kind of build on top of that. And then you can really see and appreciate how different 
and how new, unique uh, Neopads are. So a traditional way of installing a saxophone pad into the pad cup is to, um, you know, you have a saxophone pad, which is uh, consisted of uh, a cardboard backing, felt, and then usually wrapped with some kind of leather. Okay, whether it be, uh, you know, standard tan leather, which I believe is, um, I believe it's sheepskin, or whether you go with another type of pad that is maybe, I don't know, a kangaroo skin, um, but they all are constructed fairly same, uh, where it's a, a cardboard backing, felt on the inside, and then wrapped around with some kind of leather uh, coating, and then, uh, or sorry, leather, um, you know, skin. Uh, then you have some kind of resonator that you can install, metal, plastic, whatever, uh, personal preference when it comes into that. And then it is uh, then glued into a pad cup. A uh, couple different ways of adhesive. Um, you know, you can use traditional shellac. Uh, you can use uh, synthetic shellac. Uh, you can use hot glue. So that it's some kind of uh, adhesive and usually a fair amount so that you can actually float and level that pad into place. And this obviously involves uh, quite a bit of tooling um, as far as, you know, your heat source. It does uh, require um, uh, some supplies as far as your shellac, uh, you know, things like that. Other tools, you know, pad slicks, pad irons, pad pricks, you know, all this stuff. Um, so that's kind of the general uh, or the traditional way to install a standard saxophone pad. Okay? And the saxophone pad is basically a fixed into this pad cup. So it's it's not moving around, it's it's stationary. So it goes where the pad cup goes. So once you install that pad into the pad cup and then you install the key onto the instrument, you then have to go and level that pad. So installation is the first step and then leveling is the second step. That's usually where we'll put a light down the instrument, heat the pack, the, the pad cup up. Usually, I mean, traditional way is to use some kind of butane torch. Um, you know, we obviously have, uh, you know, the Vortex air torch is what we use uh, quite a bit in the Sax Pro Shop. Um, and we use that to heat up the back of the pad cup, which in turn softens the glue and allows it to move around. And that's what we usually call floating. So we're floating that pad in that very thin layer of adhesive. In the Sax Pro Shop, I tend to use the clear synthetic shellac, uh, usually out of a Z gun. Okay. So once you get that shellac hot and it's able to, you know, that pad is able to kind of float around, that's when you're putting your leak light in to the body uh, and then you're leveling it so that you see no visible light 360 degrees all the way around the saxophone pad. And it tends to be a fairly tedious process. Okay. Um, it's one of the things when I first started here in the Sax Pro Shop, uh, my very first job, I was given a work order to pad a bass saxophone. And the total amount of time to pad that bass saxophone was nine hours. And originally I thought, wow, that's a lot of time. Well, after 12 hours, I thought, man, that nine hours is not enough time. Um, had I had had Neopads, it would have gone a lot quicker because I had to not only install all those pads, but level those pads. And when you get into a pad that is fairly big, it makes it a little bit tougher to get completely get that pad to seal around those that tone hole completely. All right. There's other things that we can do to before we actually put the pad in that will help us in uh, achieving better results. Right. And, and we've done numerous videos on this uh, through our Wednesday Wisdom, and we have a, a few on our YouTube channel as well, where we talk about, I think it's either four or five variables, um, possibly six variables, uh, if I'm trying to keep track here, um, that will result in a better pad job. And that is with standard traditional pads. All right. A couple things that we want to do is um, we want to make sure that uh, the body is completely straight. Okay, the body is straight. All of our dent work is taken out of. Uh, let's see here. Uh, sorry, there's a question. I, Kevin, I'm going to leave that question up to Rich when he signs in. He'll be able to help you out with the um, with the pricing on, on that, or Leroy can help you out with the pricing on that. Um, but couple variables that you want to do think about before you actually put pads in is first off having the body straight okay, and, and doing all your dent work. Okay. I don't want to get into where I'm putting pads in and all of a sudden I'm like, well, now I got to remove this dent right next to this tone hole. And then you're undoing work that you've already done. Okay. So body work is done. Body is straight. Uh, uh, dents are removed. The next thing that we want to think about is um, level tone holes. Okay. And that really can only happen after uh, the body is straight and all the dents are taken out of it. So having level tone holes, 
The third thing would be having tight key work. Okay. If you have your pad cup and it's over the tone hole and that key is loose, well, that's not going to get you a good seal over that tone hole. Okay. You got to make sure that your key work is also tight. So that involves key fitting and okay? usually some swaging, um, you know, cutting back of keys, extending keys, you know, fitting your pivot screws, things like that. So the key work has to be stable. Okay? The next thing is dry fitting. And this is kind of a two-part thing, dry fitting for proper ergonomics. And okay? that would be things like getting your key touches in alignment, okay? Bending your key, your palm keys, you know, these guys get bent quite a bit, bending these, reorienting this so that it feels good. So dry fitting for ergonomics, and that usually involves key touches. The next thing would be dry fitting for proper pad cup geometry. Okay? And this is a big, really big, important one where we're trying to uh, uh, make it that the pad cup closes perfectly over that tone hole. So I don't have it like this. I don't have it like this. It's not like this tilted. It's completely centered over that tone hole as well. So that's proper uh, dry fitting for proper pad cup geometry. Okay? One of the last things would be making sure you're using a flat pad. We'll talk about Neopads and why they're flat. Um, so I think I've kind of covered all of those kind of things that will leave you with a better job in the long run if you're doing traditional padding. Okay? This can still be done. All those steps can still be done with Neopads, and that will actually leave you with an even better result than if you had done nothing. All right. Oh, one thing I forgot also to mention is your pad cups have to be level. And pad cups level, tone holes are level, uh, proper uh, key fitting, uh, dry fitting, and then obviously straight body. Okay? So all of those things have to, uh, should be done in order for you to end up with a really good uh, pad job with traditional padding. All right. Uh, so let's talk about the construction of a traditional pad. And I did that over here. Let me see if I can get to my correct camera. There we are. This is the first person Ryan cam. Okay. You are seeing what I'm seeing. So I, what I did here is I deconstructed a saxophone pad. Okay. So I have my cardboard backing. So you just standard cardboard backing. I actually took apart a um, music medic soft feel uh, pad followed by the felt, and then finally, if you can see here, the leather. And this is our standard tan leather that you find with our standard tan pads, our soft feel, and our soft feel thick. So it all has that same. And this is our traditional, you know, tan uh, kid leather, I believe. Like I said, I think it's a uh, 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 sheepskin. Uh, and all of that is assembled and then glued together. But you can see kind of the inner workings of a traditional pad. And then what I did was I took apart a neo pad to show you kind of all the different sections of that. Before we actually look at the complete deconstruction, I just want to show you very quickly what a Neopad looks like when it's not completely exploded. So there we are right there. It is a standard tan leather. Okay? It is the our brown uh, plastic rezzo, little indicator right there, the Neopad sticker right in the center. The big difference is on the back here. Okay? Uh, the backing you'll notice is blue. We, we are able to uh, label them music medic. And then the nice thing is we do label the size in millimeters, but this is a stiff uh, plastic backing. Okay? So it's a little bit firmer uh, than our standard cardboard backing. If we look at our deconstructed pad here. So I have my plastic backing. There it is right there. And you can see it has some structure to it versus a cardboard back. Okay? And that is helpful when we get into actually installing it and having this pad be completely flat, right? Okay? The next thing is our felt, okay? Right? That is the, the other big difference is on a standard tan pad, we're using more of a natural felt. This, for a Neopad, we're using a synthetic felt, okay? Right? The leather, exactly the same, okay? Exactly the same tan leather that we're using for our standard tan pads, whether it be the uh, standard tan, the soft feel, or the soft feel thick. It all has the same leather. The biggest difference is Neopads for right now only come with a choice of uh, brown plastic resonators. Okay. Um, so that is the main difference. The real construction of the real magic of that Neopad is that little center portion right there. And I actually have over here 
the world's largest neo pad. In fact, it's the world's largest saxophone pad. It just so happens to be a neo pad, but here it is. Okay, this is the world's largest pad. It just so happens to be a neo pad. I am in process of contacting Guinness Book of World Records. We'll see, uh, but this is a neo pad, so you can kind of see what it looks like up close. Okay? I could do this, but where's the fun in that? I got a giant neo pad here. Okay, um, this is. You can see the kind of the inner workings of this back portion, and it is a self-leveling pad. Okay? That is the probably the main feature of it. It does have some other features that you may not be aware of, but after this, hopefully attending this or taking this clinic, um, it'll be fairly apparent. Okay, make sure I'm in here. Okay. So so here's my Neopad. The magic lies within this back portion right here. Where we've made this kind of, um, it's this uh, this uh, insert, I guess, and then we have this, this spud here. A right. couple things about a Neopad is, you notice this slot, okay? And if I go to an actual Neopad, maybe you can see it here. Okay, you can see how it's facing north south there's my little slot what happens is on the the spud the base of that uh neopad actually fits into there's a little pin that fits into that slot and what this does is it prevents this neopad from rotating 360 degrees once it's in the pad cup okay if we just made a ball and socket there's no way to prevent that from rotating so what we do is we have a small pin that fits into a slot and that again prevents that neopad from rotating once it's in the pad cup and installed all right. Uh, let's see here. A question from Rick is, does the self-leveling tab increase the pad height and thickness? I think we're talking about this. Yes, it does. And we're going to talk about a couple different things we can do for dealing with the thickness of a, uh, a, a, a different type of pad. So let me show you real quick. I have some visual aids. All right. Here's my visual aid. This we're going to talk very kind of quickly about proper pad thickness and proper pad protrusion and why it's so important with especially traditional pads. All right, so here we are, I have, there it is. It's it's my uh, saxophone pad cup uh, tone hole display. It's moving. I stayed up real late making this, okay, but this is gonna show us why it's important to have the correct thickness of pad. And this goes for traditional pads or regular pads. There we go. Now I got a, a white background. Let's say I go with a pad that's about that thick and I install it into the pad cup. I glue it in here. That pad cup is glued down and I go and I go to close that pad cup. And we're hopefully going to see what happens when we use a pad that's too thin. There it is right there. We notice how it's actually hitting in the front before it actually hits in the back. All right. So there it is touching in the front. And then we have a little bit of a gap in the back, that pad is too small. There's one or two things we can do. We can actually get a thicker pad or we can change the pad cup orientation and how it relates over the tone hole, right? Again, this is if we're using traditional pads. So, you know, I would try to maybe bend this up here and there. So when this comes down, it maybe comes down a little bit more level. Probably the easiest thing is just to swap out the pad. Well, let's say, let me see if I go with this guy right here. I install this guy into the pad cup like so. It's a nice fit. And let's see what happens when I use a pad that's, well, I don't know, and maybe it's too thick. Yep, there we are. So we have now the opposite problem where this pad is now hitting in the back and leaking in the front. With this type of leak, it's not necessarily the end of the world. It could be crushed, closed, uh, and you can get it to seal, but that's not how you should be closing your keys. If I go back to the, the thin pad, you know, here we go. We'll put this in and we'll close it. And I have a, a, a leak in the back. There's nothing I can do to squeeze to get that out, okay? So if you're gonna err on the side of having it leak in the front or leak in the back, definitely don't have it leak in the back. You're dead in the water, okay? You're, you're not gonna be able to crush that close, but let's say the pad is a little too thick and then you can really, err if I crush it down again, like I said, not the greatest way to do it. We would probably change pad cup geometry, but let's see what it happens when I use a pad that is the correct thickness, right? There, perfect, okay? Nice and even, and that's really what we want. So if we're using traditional pads, okay, this might mean stocking 
different thickness of pads for no matter what you're working on, okay? Unless you plan on doing a lot of changing of pad cup geometry. And when we get into it, sometimes this can be a time consuming process. Okay? So we have a couple different thickness of pads that we can stock to, to take care of that. Let's take a look at, at Neopads and how they actually function in the pad cup. Uh, and depending on the type of pad cup. So again, I have my visual aids. Again, I spent, got here early this morning and started working on these. So I have my Neopad. There it is. Look at that. It's my Neopad. Okay. There we are. There's the Neopad. There's my little spot. I got a little rivet. Okay. But that's essentially how a Neopad works is you glue it in and it can self-level itself. Obviously, this is 2D. With a Neopad, it, it rotates 360 degrees. All right. So there we are. Uh, let's see here. Rick also asked, would you use a shim between the pad and the cup uh, to the pad be a solution? Yes. And we'll talk about uh, 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 what we can do um, with that, with, with different shims. Yeah. Rather than bending keys. Yeah. I would much rather... Um, change the thickness of my pad than bend keys around. Sometimes you have to bend keys. It's just what has to happen, you know, or if they got bent, you straighten the keys, okay, or reorient them. But sometimes it's much easier just to pick out a different thickness of pad. But let's say you're a hobbyist, you don't have maybe the access to uh, multiple thicknesses of pads, or maybe you're a big shop and it, it's not economically feasible for you to stock three different sizes of entire pad sets, from, you know, from seven millimeters up to, uh, uh, you know, 60, 65 millimeters. All right. So we're going to talk about why Neopads are nice. Okay. Right? So when you get a Neopad, what comes pre-installed is a, a standard thickness spud. Okay. Right? The standard thickness spud. And I have a couple different spuds out here. But when you get a Neopad, where's my Neopad? Here it is. It comes pre-installed with a standard thickness spud. And to give you an idea of the thickness of this base, okay, this little tiny base right there is about a half a millimeter. Okay? The next size up, we also have a medium spud, which the, the base on that is about um, one millimeter. Okay? And then we have a tall spud. It's about a millimeter and a half. Okay, so we do have some height that we can play around with depending on the type of pad cup that we're putting our Neopad in. Okay, so we have a couple different types of, Neo, uh, of, of saxophone pad cups, again, cross sections. So you can see with a standard, this would be kind of a basic type of saxophone pad. It's not really arced. It's not super, super deep. It's not super, super shallow. Um, so when I install my Neopad and that base hits, I have a little bit of that wiggle. Okay. So this right here, this would probably be a standard thickness spud. So whatever comes with the Neopad, I can go ahead and install and be good to go. Okay. So we're talking height. Then we're going to talk here a little bit about the actual oh, diameter of the pad. Let's say I have a different type of pad cup, maybe one that looks something like this. Okay. What, uh, what I can do to maybe get a little bit more protrusion because sometimes what happens is you can see maybe this bottoms out and now I don't get a lot of wiggle. Okay. I don't get a lot of that tilting. Okay. So what I would have to do is actually swap out my spud. Okay. Very easy process. Uh, I think like I've described a few times, okay. all you're going to do is get your fingernail in behind. You're just going to pop it out. You're gonna grab your new spud. You're gonna make sure that you line up the slot with the pin. That's the most important thing when you're when you're uh, reinstalling the spud. So my way to do it is I, I when I hold the pad, I hold the the um, the slot in a north south position. I grab my spud here and I orient my pin facing directly at me, and then I can line everything up and snap it in like so. All right. That's the most important when you're installing and uh, removing the actual spuds themselves. So what I would do is I would snap that guy out and I would probably snap in one that had a medium height spud in. So I've gone the next step up. So I went from a half millimeter to a millimeter base. And now I can install that and let's see what that guy looks like. There we go. We're now a little bit better. Now I can get a little bit more tilt to it. 
right? Let's say I have a pad cup that looks something like this. Those of you that are familiar with King Super 20s, uh, they tend to have that kind of cone-shaped um, look to them where it's kind of very deep here in the bottom. Right? And let's say I, I take that Neopad with a standard spud and I put it all the way in and wow, yeah, I get no, no tilt. It just goes all the way in because it's a very deep cup, especially with this extreme angle on the bottom. It's not a flat bottom like this. It's not even a very deep flat bottom. So let's see what happens while I move. Well, let's move up to that medium spud. Let's put that guy in and let's see here. I get a little bit more, but I think I might have to go to my tall spud. All right. So let's see what this looks like. I can install here and there we go. Now I have plenty of pivoting back and forth. And all I had to do, not change the pad, the pad stays the same, only one thickness for Neopads. I just changed the spud, okay? That which changes the actual height themselves. There's another trick you can do. And I think somebody asked if would you shim it? Um, you have it if you, yes, absolutely you can shim it. And what I recommend using for those are these guys right here. These are what we sell here at Music Medic. These are our flute pad uh, washers. Okay. They are the absolute perfect size for shimming Neopads. And I like how they have a hole in them because that helps with getting the adhesive to kind of spread evenly. Okay. So let's say you have a set of Neopads. You're taking Rich up on his deal. You get the Neopads, but for whatever reason, you forget to order the spud assortment. Well, you can use flute washers if you have them. If not, order some. But I would definitely recommend when you order a Neopad set, definitely get the spud, um, the height, the spud height assortment with that. All right. So definitely get that. Yes. Uh, so I had to add some. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yep. So yeah, Gerald saying he had to add some nylon washers to build up the King Super 20 cup hole. Yes. Um, the other thing that I will also mention, if you are putting Neopads into um, King Super 20s with this very deep kind of pyramid or cone shaped uh, pad cup is you have to let a little extra time for that glue to completely cure. Okay. Um, and we're going to talk about installation when I get into it and what I use for that uh, and the time that it takes for this glue to adhere uh, and completely cure. But get, leave a little bit of extra time for these because you do have a little bit more volume in the bottom of these uh, pad cups. So we've talked about pad protrusion. We've also talked about uh, uh, pad height uh, when it comes to both traditional pads and neo pads. So now let's see what it looks like when we actually go and install a neo pad. Here's my live demo. Here's my live demo. Let's bring this guy back out. Let's show you first off some of the tools that you're going to need to install neo pads. If this were traditional pads, I'd be showing you pad slicks. And, screwdrivers and spring hooks and, and you know, uh, pad irons and shellac and different types of heat sources. That's pretty much it. That's all you really need to install Neopads into the pad cup. You notice there is no heat source, okay? I have this in here, uh, well, just for fun, but I don't need this, okay? This is, un it's unnecessary to install um, uh, uh, Neopads using any kind of heat source, okay? which is nice because now I don't have to worry about burning lacquer, burning felts, you know, anything else that like that, that may happen. So let's take a look. All I did was just grab a pad that has, or sorry, a key that has a pad in it. So we're gonna remove this and I'm gonna show you some prep tips when it comes to installing Neopad. So the first things first, let's see, where's my, see if I can heat this guy up and pull this out. All right. Oh, okay. We can see what we've got going on here. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this where they are using partial shims on saxophone pads. The first thing I'll notice is the back of this pad is completely dry. There is absolutely no adhesive on this pad whatsoever. So this was just pretty much stuck in and then bent around to hopefully for it to seal completely. You can see, even see there's still a shim stuck on the back of this one. So uh, I'll get rid of this. 
One of the most important things when you go from installing traditional pads to installing Neopads into a pad cup, you have to make sure that this pad, um, this pad cup surface on the inside is clean. All right. So there's a couple ways of doing that. Uh, if it's hot glue, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just heat it up, try not to catch those shims on fire, and I will just wipe it out with a cloth. All right. Sometimes it's a little bit more aggressive and stubborn. You have to get in there with an old pad slick and just kind of scrape it out. And hopefully you're doing this if you were to be installing traditional pads as well, it makes for better adhesion, then you don't have that mix of different adhesives. It doesn't look like some kind of, uh, you know, like a soil sample of, you know, previous tech used this, somebody else used this, and the next guy used this. So heat this up one more time. See if I can wipe out the rest of that old glue. All right. So looking pretty good. A lot of it is, is kind of wiped out. Um, the other area that I focus in on when I'm cleaning pad cuffs, particularly for Neopads, is I have to make sure that this inner rim is completely clean and free of any old adhesive, dirt, or debris. Right? For a lot of times, I will just use an old pad slick and I will scrape that out. Right? I also really like to use this scraper right here. This is the world's best scraper. That's not me saying that. That's what it's actually called. Um, this allows me to clear off any old debris or uh, adhesive on the inside. The other area that I want to focus in on is right here in the center. Okay? I want to make sure that this is, is free because this is where that spud is going to be glued into the pad cup. So if I have any old adhesive and I glue it on top of that, it's not going to be a very strong bond. Right? So I have to make sure I clean this area off. Really, a couple of uh, my go-to is just to use a scraper and actually just scrape off get down to that bare brass of the underneath. Right. Now I'm not gouging it, okay? There's no marks. I don't feel anything under my, my fingers, but you can see how I did completely clean and prep that surface. Uh, other things you can use to clean the inside is some of this stuff right here. And this is just the debonder that we sell here at Music Medic that goes along with a lot of our super glues. And this is the glue that we're going to be using to install this. This is our rubber toughened glue. Um, and we're going to show you, I'm going to show you um, exactly how here in a minute. But what you can do is you can use some of this stuff. Um, this is that debonder for that, that um, CA glue. Um, and it is really good for loosening up any old adhesive. A warning though, just be very careful using this stuff around lacquered surfaces, because especially if it's a relacquer, it has the possibility of removing Lacquer. So just be very, very careful whether you're using this, whether you're using it for cleaning insides of pad cups, or if you're using it for its intended purposes, purpose of unsticking your fingers when you use super glue. Uh, because if I had a nickel for every time I have glued my fingers together using super glue, those nickels would also be glued together. So I'm going to use just a little bit of this CA glue remover right there in the center. And I can kind of spread it around a little bit with my scraper. And like I said, this does a really good job of removing any old adhesive that's kind of remaining from scraping it. Take my rag, clean it up. Now I think we're looking pretty good on this pad cup. Okay. Other things that I'm looking for before I go install a Neo pad cup is I'm looking at the condition of the rim of the actual pad cup itself. If I have a flat spot or something that's been pushed in, maybe it, you know, uh, it got dented, um, I'm going to want to re-round that rim out. And how can I do that? I can use these pad cup and tone hole pliers that we sell here at Music Medic. A lot of Music Medic stuff I've been talking about, oddly enough. Um, but here we are, this is a half round and one side is flat. And this is used for removing dents in not only pad cups, uh, but you can also use it on tone holes as well. And it's a good pair of bending pliers. Uh, so you can pretty much bend, you know, pieces of brass or, or you know, anything that you need bent. Uh, you can use this. But if I do see a flat spot that's pushed in, I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to reform it to make this as round as possible. Okay. If I was installing traditional pads, ones that actually were, you know, glue on the back, stuck in and then floated into place, I would make sure that I leveled this pad cup. 
And I would take my bench block, I would put it on, raw hide mallet, I would level, level, level. With Neo pads, having a level pad cup is not as important, right? Because the pad is not glued and affixed to that pad cup, it is free folding. The only place it's glued is right here. Pad cups are shaped like a cup because traditionally that's how, what we needed to do to keep that adhesive in there, okay? With, with uh, Neopads, I don't need this rim. Heck, I don't even need this. I just need this one little area. So it could just be a spine with a little pad right there. I glue my Neopad on and it's good to go, right? So I prep my pad cup. The next thing I have to do is uh, pick out a good size Neopad. And I will tell you, what we're telling people is you have to go a half millimeter undersized, okay? So if I measure this, let's say this is probably, I don't know, like a 38 or something, 38.5, maybe a uh, 39. If this is a 39, I would be using a 38.5 pad, all right? Let's see, what I'm looking for is I wanna see a gap all the way around the pad. If this were a traditional pad, I wouldn't want that. I would want that pad to fit nice and tight in that pad cup for there to be no space all the way around. But with Neo pads, because it tilts in all directions, I need clearance for that actual tilt, all right? So let's see what this one looks like. Oh, that's a little bit better. You can see now I have a gap all the way around. That's a 38, all right? So that's the first thing with, with uh, sizing of your Neopads is you have to go at least a half millimeter undersized. So if you're measuring your, your pad cups at home, I typically will use a, um, a caliper and I will measure inside to inside. Uh, like I said, if it measures a you know a 38.5, I'm gonna go a half size under. So I'm gonna go with a 38 millimeter pad. Right. So I've got my pad sized correctly. The next thing I'm going to look at is my tilt. Okay? And it's very easy to check. I don't need to glue this in and then put it on the horn and check. I can just put my pad in. It already has the spud, like I said, pre-installed. When you get a Neopad, it comes pre-installed with a standard thickness spud. All right? I'll put that in and you can see, maybe you can, maybe you can't. I don't get a lot of wiggle. So that's telling me like my uh, my demo with the, the pad that was pad cup that was a little too deep, we need to go up a size, okay? So what I'm going to do, and I have my bags here of all my different spuds, I'm going to pick out one that's a little bit taller. So I'm gonna go with a medium spud. So here we are, there is my medium spud and they are kind of color co uh, coordinated. Get my tall out too, so you can see the difference between these three. And we have plenty of pictures on our website. If you go onto Neopads, we have a couple of them where we've shown in the past what those look like um, as far as the different height spuds. But here we are, there's my standard spud. Here, let me get my super up close. Whoa, that's almost too close, all right? There it is. Nice product shot, quick, rich, screenshot that. Oh, he's not even signed on. All right, so we have our standard spud, there's our medium height spud, and then our tall, okay? So I just tested it with the uh, standard height. It wasn't tall enough, okay? If this were a traditional pad, I would be picking out a thicker pad, but I'm gonna use the same pad, but I'm gonna switch out my spud. So I'm gonna grab my medium, and again, I'm going to put it so that my slot is facing north-south. I'm gonna grab it so that my pin is facing directly at me, and I'm going to snap it in like so. Now I can go ahead and do my little bit of a dry fitting. And when I put this pad in, okay, I get a little bit more wiggle. There it is right there, just a little bit more. I want a little bit more. So let's go ahead and see what it feels like when I use that tall spud. Move this guy out of the way. Here is my tall based spud. Again, that base is about a millimeter and a half. So I'm just getting a little bit more protrusion, line my slot up with my pin, insert it like so. And now, oh, there we are. Yep. So that is the spud that I need to go with. All right, so it's the tall spud, right, depending on your leveling or your pad cup. So 
how do we install this pad into this pad cup? Well, I alluded to it earlier. This is the glue or the adhesive that we're going to be using. All right. This is our, we call it rubber toughened glue. It is a rubberized super glue. We've tested uh, quite a bit of different um, adhesives when we were working on this. And I really meant to set up a camera. We have what is eloquently called our pad whacker, which is our testing machine that we use to test out uh, different pads that we're working on, different construction materials and whatnot. Um, but it is set to just constantly close the pad over and over and over again. These, the keys are sprung shut very heavily. And it's basically the, um, the right hand stack of an alto, okay? So we have them sprung shut, we have a cam so that it opens up the keys and then they slam shut over and over and over again. Um, so we're testing different things, how the materials wear, um, the different adhesives uh, that we've used to, to hold in Neopads and we, we figured out that this is the best stuff. Okay. Uh, and we did quite a bit of testing with the pad whacker. I used to tell people we hit a million wax where we timed it and boom, 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 a million. Um, I was actually corrected, I think on one testing occasion, we we're up to 6 million wax. That's essentially this for eight hours a day, nonstop. And I know because I was sitting right next to it when it was happening um, and it just made me go crazy, you know, just, uh, uh, just pad whacking over and over and over again. So we did a lot of testing as far as the adhesive to use. And we found that this stuff, this rubber toughened super glue is the stuff to use, all right? How much do we use? Well, this is just a little bottle. Uh, I mean, if this were, you know, shellac, I could probably get, I don't know, about six pads in, okay, with this amount of shellac, maybe seven, okay? Uh, if I had to take a guess, I could probably install 25 saxophone uh, sets worth, not 25 pads, but 25 sets with just this one bottle of glue, because I'm using very, very little glue. And I'll show you on this paper towel, that is how much I'm using. Here it is again, just like that. One more time and a few more times. There we are. So I'm using a very small dab of this rubber toughened glue. Okay. I've got my pad cup prepped. I've picked out the correct diameter of Neopad. I've correct, uh, picked out the correct height determined by my base. Now I'm ready to install. Right. So here we are. What I do is I drop a little dab directly on the back of that pad with that spud pre-installed, just like so. Okay. And I believe on this bottle, it says you have 20 to 45 seconds of working time. So I better hurry up here. So when I install, all right, I like to keep my fingers at a north, south, east, west. I guess it's like this. All right, north, south, east, west position. My fingers are touching both the pad rim and the edge of the pad, and this helps center it. All right, give it a, a few seconds here, kind of let that glue cure a little bit. What I can do to really test to see if I have any uh, maybe obstructions is as the glue is curing, I'm just going to kind of move it back and forth, give a little bit of tilt here and there. And if I feel it rubbing against the edge, it's very easy to pop this out and then actually reset where my spud is glued into. And I think that's enough time. And there we are. Neopad has been installed. You can see I have plenty of tilt for my pad. And that pad is going to level nicely. But again, it's nicely centered all the way around. And that's what you want to see. If this were a traditional pad, I'd be pulling this guy out and putting a thicker one in or, or a, a bigger one in. Okay, this is unacceptable for traditional pads. If it were traditional pads, your adhesive would just spill out the sides when you started leveling it. But because it's a Neopad, I need that little bit of tilt. This one's good to go. Okay. So let's say for whatever reason, uh, maybe I used a little too much glue. I got a little bit heavy handed here. I don't know my own strength and I squeezed out way too much glue behind that. And I've accidentally glued Maybe some of that glue has kind of come off and glued itself so that pad doesn't actually move anymore. It's very easy to reset everything. I would get something underneath. And all I'm using here is a spring hook that has a slight curve to it. And I did flatten it out a little bit with the hammer. And this allows me to get between the pad and the pad rim. And then I can get underneath the pad. 
Okay, I'm not actually piercing the pad. I know it looks like it, but I'm not. All right, so I get underneath the pad and then it's just a matter of levering it up and it pops off and you can see my spud still glued where it needs to be. And let's say I'm, you know, swapping out uh, Neopads. I pop that guy out. I indicate where my spud pin is going to be. I line up my slot and I change my pad. I just change that pad in a second, but well, maybe like four seconds. Okay. So very easy to switch out and take out. All right. Just like that. Let's say for whatever reason, you put a set of Neopads in or you put one in and maybe you don't like it or your, your customer doesn't like it um, for whatever reason. The nice thing about Neopads is it doesn't permanently modify the pad cup. It's not like we're drilling or soldering anything in here. We're just gluing this in right, with just standard rubber tough and super glue. Right? So we can very easily remove this, let's say for whatever reason. Maybe let's say I glued in a tall spud and it shouldn't have been a tall, it should have been a medium spud for whatever reason, all right? So I'm gonna just remove this. I'm gonna take my scraper. And I'm just gonna get kind of underneath that spud and it just, you can see it just peeled right up, all right? That's with some pressure of me prying it back up. The act of playing is really not gonna do much as far as loosening up that spud. Like I said, in those 6 million wax, we've never seen a Neopad fall out. Okay, because of the glue that we're using. All right. Cleaning this up is fairly uh, straightforward as well. I can again use my scraper, scrape up my glue, clean my pad cup up like that. I can also go back to using a little bit of my remover, all right. spreading that in there. Another thing that you can do, and this helps if, if your um, this helps if you're cleaning the uh, the pad out from the get go, where you have maybe old adhesive, old shellac, um, you know, old hot glue or whatever. You can use this guy right here, which is just a bristle disc. We sell these. It's a 3M bristle disc. I believe this is the white, which is a. Uh, it's not a super aggressive, but then again, it's not a more of a polishing thing. It's kind of in between. Um, but you can use this under power, obviously, um, you know, bench motor, uh, you know, Dremel, uh, Fordham, whatever rotary hand piece. And you can actually get in there and clean the inside of that pad cup up. All right. Once I've cleaned that up, I can take that pad, which I think I dropped. Here it is. I can reinstall whatever spud I think it should have in there. I'm going to put this medium one in it. So here we go. So let me just reinstall the medium one. There we go. I'm going to make sure that this is cleaned up all the way. And now I can, again, making sure that I see some glue here in the corners that can interfere with how the Neopad wants to level. All right. So I've got everything reinstalled. I'm just going to use, again, that same glue, a small dab right on the back. Same pad, new spud. Let's put that guy in there like so. Again, north, south, east, west. Hold it there 20 to 45 seconds. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, if you are working on a, a horn that has a very deep pad cup, a lot of volume, in there, King Super 20 in particular, King Zephyrs, I believe, maybe the same thing. Um, you'll want to allow, I would allow at least two minutes, to be very honest with you, to really ensure that that glue cures completely. Um, so you can just kind of hold it initially and then just just let it sit. Okay? Um, you know, like I said, go, go take a break or whatever, come back, um, you know, a minute or two later um, to really allow that glue to cure. But we're good to go. And now I can still see, I still have some tilt with this guy here. A right. uh, couple other things about Neopads is they are available in not every size, but quite a bit of sizes. I believe the smallest one that we have, Rich, if you're on here and I say it incorrectly, please correct me. I wanna say it's a 13 millimeter pad. So this guy right here is a Neopad. At a certain point in time, we do start to offer them with the resonator in them, but the smaller ones do not, as you can see, have 
any kind of rivet or resonator in it. They are just the the just the 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 unpunched one. Um, but what allows us to get down to this size is we have a smaller version of this whole spud receptacle combo. Yes, thank you, Leroy. Yes, they start at 13, I guess, that right here. And I want to say 16 or 16.5 is when it starts the resos. Please correct me if I'm wrong, and I know you will. But don't dock my pay. Okay. So what we did is when we decided to come up with Neopads is we wanted this to work for a set for alto. Okay, and sometimes that top stack C pad is somewhat smaller than a lot of our palm key pads. Um, so we designed a very small system. This, when you get for most of these, this is an eight millimeter base. These smaller guys use a five millimeter base. It's just a very small version of the whole pivoting mechanism. There it is. All right. So it's just a small, yep. Yeah. Yeah, Leroy wrote in 17.5 is what starts with the plastic resonators, okay? which I know people are going to ask, like I mentioned earlier, but right now, Neopads only come with plastic resonators. Okay? We are looking into, in the possible future, not too near and maybe not hopefully too distant, um, that we're looking at different types of resonators, metal ones or, or whatever um, is the popular style to have nowadays. Um, so you do have options. So when you get a set of Neopads for alto, tenor, baritone, it will be all of them aside from the very smallest octave pit pads. Right? We, we're not miracle workers here. We can't make those self-level. They're pretty easy to install as it is, but the, the octave pads that are on the neck and the body octave. So that little guy right in the middle there, unfortunately you have to go with the standard pad for that. Um, I would in, I would install that with traditional adhesive, uh, that being either hot glue or shellac. Um, I would not use this stuff to install your octave pip pads in a traditional sense. Okay, this is only for neopads. Okay. Uh, let's see, there's some other questions here. The, the neopad pivots on the spud. What do you, you test results show for where are becoming loose? Ah, that is a great question. I thank you so much for bringing that up, uh, Rick. We did a lot of testing as far as the grip of this mechanism, okay? Um, Rick, who is our tool designer machinist extraordinaire, um, he was the one worked on a couple different uh, types of backs, geometries. Um, so it had a couple different of, keep using the word friction, Okay, that's not maybe the best use of this, but there, there is a little bit of kind of feel behind the Neopad. The first thing I want to say is that with Neopads, um, and actually let me get a leak light and I'm going to pop a light down this Alto I have. And I want you to see how kind of they function, how the Neopad actually self-levels. Move some of this stuff out of the way. And that way you can kind of see Neopad in action for my wobbly cam. I apologize. Okay. So here we are, this, this whole horn, which these keys are missing, I'm going to install here in a little bit and then in, install it onto the horn. Uh, hopefully we'll have time for that. But you can see these are all Neopads, okay, where they will tilt and move. Right. But what we did is we built friction into that mechanism so that it kind of stays in place. Right. So if I'm we're looking at this F key, for example, if I make it unlevel, there I just made it unlevel. Right? Heavy on this side. As soon as that pad comes down, it's going to hit that heavy spot and then it's going to cause it to level itself. And now when I open it up, it stays in that position. Okay. It's not like every time it goes and is going to hit and level, hit and level, hit and level, hit and level. Okay. It's going to stay in that position. We built in friction into that internal mechanism so that it, it's not like running in flip-flops. That's my analogy where you, you're going to feel like a little bit of a tut -tut, but, but where it levels and then it hits, it levels and it hits. You're not going to feel that with Neopads because of that friction. Even after, you know, a million, three million, six million wax, it still had that friction or that, that stability built into that tilting mechanism. Okay. The other thing that we tested extensively here in the Pro Shop is the 
sound, okay? We are very particular about the pad sound in the Saks Pro Shop. Um, some would say we're maybe a little over potty trained about the sound. Maybe we're a little too sensitive about the pad sound, but we want a nice quiet pad. Obviously we want the pad to seal. We want it to function for a long period of time, but we want that pad to sound quiet. We don't want to hear click, click, clack, click, clack, clack. Okay, when we push these pads down. So we're very sensitive about this. So when we were working on that friction, that built in, that, that uh, you know, that, that, that tilt, we made it so that it's not so loose that you hear a clack, 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 clack. Okay? The pad cup is not going, you're not going to hear any sound from that pad cup hitting the back of, or that pad hitting the back of the pad cup. Okay? That's not the sound. What you're going to hear is the pad closing on the tone hole. Just a traditional pad sound. Right? So we're very sensitive about the types of sound it made. Um, and that, again, comes back to that friction that's built in to the actual pad itself. Okay, so we talked a little bit about sizing. I've got another demo here I'm gonna show you as well. And this will hopefully, you can see exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about sizing. So I've got a pad cup here and I've got a couple of Neo pads in order. I have a 47.5, I have a 48 and a 48.5. And we're just gonna kind of see what fits in this pad cup the best. And you can see I've prepped it, that center portion right there. Again, I want to really clean up everything if I can. I don't want any residual adhesive remaining in the back of the pad. And again, I want to make sure that that pad cup, the inner rim is clean and free of debris. Right? So Let's take a look. Let's see what happens when uh, we're going to start from the, the largest size up. So I have a 48.5. I'm going to insert that, that into the pad cup. And what I'm seeing here is first off, unless I really push this guy, this is not going to go in to the pad cup all the way. I don't know if you guys can see a high. Kind of have it tucked in in the back, but it's sticking out here in the front. Okay. For a Neo pad, this is way too big. For a traditional pad, in my opinion, this is perfect. Okay. If this were, if I were installing this with traditional shellac or, or hot glue behind it, um, this would be a perfect fit because what tends to happen is with me putting hot stuff on this pad, it starts to contract that pad leather, maybe even that pad felt. Okay. Um, the other thing that will, will happen is as I'm installing this pad, I'm heating this pad cup up, and while I'm actually leveling this pad once it's on the instrument, I'm heating everything up and everything's gonna tighten up. So what may first look like a too big of a pad, when it comes to traditional padding, this is the perfect fit, okay? Eventually this will be a nice tight fit in the pad cup. You won't see it where it pops up because everything tightens up. It goes into the pad cup much easier. You're not gonna see a gap all the way around for your shellac to uh, ooze out of. Um, but in the terms of Neopads, this pad is too big. Right. Um, to answer your question, Jim, you say, uh, do the, the glue tips clog? They can occasionally clog on these guys. But what I have uh, found is if I use these extensions, which are, are fantastic, you can just cut a little knot, um, cut the little bit off the tip and then put this guy on. And what this does is now I have a little bit of extension. And if this glues and clogs, I can just snip that off. And you can see I have a little bit of extension before I have to completely take this off. So this does quite a bit. Now you really like to use these with my standard super glues as well, you know, especially the very thin stuff. It makes it very easy to apply. So yeah, if you do get Neopads, you get the whole uh, the whole kit, you get the um, get the spud set with it and get uh, this glue, go ahead and get a couple of these little extender kits, the tips as well, okay? They also work on the standard, uh, the, um, the debonder. Okay. So, so we've talked about our fit, this one being way too big, that's not gonna allow enough tilt for that Neopad to actually fully function. All right, let's see what this one looks like. It's a little bit better, it went into the pad cup at least. I, I see just a little bit of a gap. I don't know if you guys can see that, how I'm wiggling it in there. It's not quite enough. Okay, in my opinion, it's not quite enough. So I can go down all the way to that size, there we are. 
Traditional pads, if this were a traditional glued in pad, that would make me feel uncomfortable. Okay, since it's a Neo pad, this is perfectly fine. All right, that little bit of space is exactly what we need to allow that pad to actually pivot. Okay, rotate 100, uh, sorry, not rotate, but pivot. It's kind of a gimbal in all 360 degrees. It's not spinning. Um, so yeah, as long as the pad is bigger than the tone hole, this will seal. Okay. The nice thing about a Neopad when you finally do get your hands on it, and I, I encourage you to order a set. And if you don't order a set, uh, well then, well, come to, to, to Music Medic uh, in February for our Sax Smackdown, get your hands on some Neopads and really feel them. But the construction of this pad, especially with this synthetic felt, leaves us with a very firm edge. Okay. I can actually feel it that this edge right there is, is very firm and it's kind of stretching that leather very, very taut, okay, which helps. Okay. Um, so we've determined that we're gonna go with that 47.5. We felt that that looks like it's a pretty good fit all the way around. Let me go ahead and we, we fit for our uh, diameter. Now it's fit for our height or pad protrusion. So I put this guy in, no glue, I'm not getting any, there's no pivot back and forth. That's okay. Standard spud is not big enough. We're just gonna pop that guy out. Let me grab my medium. Again, orient my slot north-south, orient my pin to the north. There we go. Now I'm on my medium. Let's see what this looks like. Okay. I see a little bit of a wiggle. Not quite enough tilt to really fully level this pad. So. Let's say you don't have any tall spuds for whatever reason, you just have a median. Well, that is where you can use the flute pad washers. And let me show you how I would install those. So the very first thing is I would go ahead and install directly in the back of the pad cup is where I would install, well, this is not my glue, this is my glue. I would install the washer. So right in the center there, and we don't need much. I'm going to go ahead and put my washer, try to center that as much as possible. And like I said, that's why I like using those glue washers because that hole in the, in the center allows that excess glue to spill out. I'm going to give that just a few seconds and I'm just going to then glue this guy directly on top. And I may use a little less this time since I already have some glue in the pad cup. Right. So, Install it the same, hold it. Again, north, south, east, west, there, there I am. My fingers are touching the pad rim and the edge of the pad. This allows me to center it. And again, if I wanna to test to see if I have plenty of movement so that it's not touching the inside of the pad cup rim, I can just kind of pivot it back and forth as that glue is fully curing. And I think that's about it. And there we are, a pad installed. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Then, well, besides put this back onto the instrument. Um, and then it levels itself. All right. There we are. Now let's see what the back of that looks like with that flute pad washer. Again, I get my tool behind it. I just wedge it up and then where we can see still installed, right? Let me show you some tips uh, that I've seen other techs use when it comes to dealing with Neopads, okay? Um, one of the first things that I've seen people do is they will actually indicate on the pad itself the location of the pin, okay? Even before they install. So if I'm working on this, I see right here, okay, well, there is my slot. So I'm right here, and I'm also lined up with it right here. Right. You see, I've just made a little mark right at the top, and I can kind of see it from the side here. Little mark there, little mark there. Go ahead and reinstall my pin. And now what I can do is when I install this pad, since I have my slots uh, indicated, I can line that slot up with my spine. So this makes it very easy the next time I have to 
take this pad out and install a new Neopad, I know my pin is in line with that slot. So I take my new pad. I look to see where the slot is. Okay, I'm going to line it up here. I snap it in. Makes it very easy. You could replace a Neopad without taking the key off of the instrument. Okay, assuming you have the accessibility to it. I like some of them, like these guys right here, I could remove that pad, assuming I indicated where my pin and my slot are, take that pad out, take another one, put it in, snap it on, and I'm ready to go. So just another little tip that I've seen technicians use when it comes to dealing with Neopads. All right. So let me do a quick install here on, uh, another install rather, uh, on some of the keys for this Wilmington Alto that I have in front of me. Let me see if I can go to a slightly different shot. There we are. Okay. So I am going to, I have some, some keys here from this Alto that I have in front of me. Uh, I'm just gonna very quickly install these. I'm gonna install it on the horn and I'm gonna show you how easy it is uh, as I'm talking the entire time, how it's easy it is for you to install Neopads. And once you install them on the horn, that's it, you're done. Uh, literally go home, take a break. Like I told Rich, go, help, go home, have a Coke and a smile. You'll be okay, all right? So uh, what I did prior to this uh, clinic here is I, I uh, went ahead and pre-picked out the correct size pads and I put an assortment of spuds um, in there as well, okay? So like I said, the standard spud, which is a half millimeter base is included with every Neopad, comes pre-installed. There's also uh, the medium spud and then the tall spud as well. So uh, like I said, keep uh, referring is make sure that when you get a Neopad set, whether it be individuals or an entire set, get the spud install kit with it. Okay. I think it's like a super discount. And with Rich's extra discount, I honestly think we might be paying you to buy these. Okay, don't quote me on that. Um, I don't want to come out of my paycheck. So here we are. I've gotten one. You can see I've pre-selected the diameter. That's exactly what I need. But now I'm going to dry fit for thickness and tilt. Eh, I mean, maybe it might work. But you know what? I've dealt with Neopads for a little bit. I know it's safe to go even higher on my protrusion that will allow that pad to actually pivot. Again, pivot uh, point faces towards me. There we go. If I wanna again indicate where my pin, there's my mark on opposite sides. I'm gonna line that up with my spine when I finally install it. And it's gonna take me two seconds. Well, between 20 and 45 seconds, technically. Just like that. There's my mark. I'm going to line that up with my spine. And again, this will allow me down the road when I do make Neopad changes, they're super easy. It's going to make it even easier. Again, 20 to 45 seconds, allow that to dry, fully cure. Yep, I think we're good on that. Let's set, set that one off to the side. Next one coming up. Here we are. There's my extra spuds. Let's see. Again, doing my dry fitting. Nope, no tilt. All right, let's switch this up to the medium. Let's see what this looks like. Uh, let's see, we're a couple questions as I'm doing this. So here, does the gap tend to attract dirt and crud around the cup more than traditional bed? I haven't noticed uh, that it, it does that and it doesn't really interfere uh, with the pad. Uh, as well, as far as you know, getting stuff in there. It's not, I'm not saying that it would never happen, but I am saying um, I haven't noticed it in the time that I've I've worked with Neopads with stuff getting in there. All right. Uh, let's see. If you run out of medium and tall spuds, can you stack shims on a standard height spud? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you can use if you have these flute sp uh, washers, uh, you can just stack it right on top. Okay. And in fact, yeah, you can do multiple ones. You can do two of them. Okay, you can do three if you really need some extra. Uh, but yeah, these flute pad washers are fantastic. You can even go so far as to punch out little uh, brass washers or little brass discs um, as long as you have uh, the correct size. And I would use definitely some kind of metal. I wouldn't use like a cork or a tech cork behind it. Definitely use pad washers uh, like so, or, um, you know, like I said, punch out little brass round shims 
uh, to use. So here we are. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna go up one more. Let's see what this does. We're looking pretty good. Here's my tilt, I'm gonna go ahead and glue it in. I could have gone with that medium and added a washer to it. That would have been also acceptable. There you go, very small dab. Oh, I, I forgot to mark my, my slot, that's okay. Like I said, it's just a little extra if you plan on coming back and swapping it out, it makes it much, much easier. You could in theory do it with the key still on the instrument. Probably just a little bit easier just to take the key off, pop the pad out, pop a new one in, put the key on and you're good to go. Okay. Yep, got my tilt, there we go, that one's done. Let's keep moving here, super easy. At the end here, I, I do have a quick little slideshow. That's why I am signed into myself on Zoom. So we're gonna go for a quick little slideshow. There we go, no tilt on this one. This is that standard spud. I'm gonna go ahead and move up. Let's see what it's like with the medium spud. There we go. Uh, let's see, a great question somebody asked. Uh, do the different height spuds impact the timing uh, corks on tandem keys? Yes, yes. You will still have to time pads together. Okay? And obviously, if I use a thicker pad, it's going to stick out. Now I do have to change my timing, possibly. But this will ensure that each pad individually will seal. And then it's just a matter of timing them together. Okay? Versus working on making this pad seal, and then making this pad seal, and then trying to pad them at the same time and seal them together. So each pad individually will seal, but then you will need to do um, some timing adjustments to make sure that, that pad, those pads, those pads that are, like you said, tandem, uh, can be timed together. Okay? If you're working on a horn, let's say like a um, uh, one that has uh, uh, adjustment screws for back bars, that is probably the best case scenario because then it's very easy to adjust your timing. So let's see here, we got this guy in. Let's see, there we are. That should be a good one. We, um, since we unveiled uh, the Neopad, we're going on a Neopad world tour. Kurt and I went down to uh, Denton, Texas and there was a Napbert regional clinic. Those of you that are unfamiliar with NAPRT, it's the National Association for Professional Band Instrument Repair Technicians, which is a bit of a mouthful, which is why we just saw it, say NAPRT. And it is the, our repair technicians that are, is our professional organization. Uh, I've done quite a bit of clinics for them, uh, but we, Kurt and I were doing a regional clinic down in Denton, Texas, and it was an hour and a half long clinic. And we brought this saxophone that you see here on display. Um, and we gave a key and a pad to everybody in the audience. They installed Neopads. We collected all the pads, uh, all the keys. We had somebody sit off to the side, they assembled it. And at the very end of the clinic, we were able to play that instrument. So we went from a saxophone that had absolutely no pads in it whatsoever, was not able to make a sound to everybody in the audience, all the technicians that, that uh, attended were able to install a Neopad, basically what I'm doing right now. And they were able to, we were all able to pad that instrument in less than an hour and a half. I think honestly, if I had to probably give it a time, I think we did it in about an hour. Right? But again, that's everybody doing it. I probably could pad an entire saxophone in two hours, you know, and that includes you know, taking out all the old pads, clean up pad, pad cups, putting pads in and reassembling it versus just leveling the pads. Once they've been installed, uh, you know, six, seven, eight hours, depending on how good you want your pad work to be. I mean, obviously the more time put into it, the better off it's going to be. Okay. Same thing with, with Neo pads is like in the beginning, I said those, those five stages of, of, you know, flat pad cut, flat tone hole, uh, dry fitting, key fitting, and using a flat pad uh, will make you have better results. If you do that with Neopads, you will have much better results than not doing that. 
There we are, that's installed. I think what we're gonna probably do after this is hopefully I can get this put together in time. If not, what I may do is um, we'll go to the slideshow uh, and it'll be kind of uh, reviewing some questions uh, at the end. Uh, and if you guys have any questions by all means, feel free to add those in. There we go. We need a little bit more of a height. Let's say for whatever reason, I think I maybe used too much glue on that. I can just take my paper towel and just take some of that away. And just a little bit. Just like that. Hold it for a few seconds. And 20 to 45 seconds and you should be good to go. Uh, Jim is asking, is there only one firmness of pad? Would you describe it as medium feel? Yes, Jim, I, I would. I would describe this Neopad as having a um, kind of a medium feel. Uh, it's not a super, super soft pad, and it's not a very firm pad. I know some professional players like a very firm pad, uh, and you can actually talk to Rich about that. Rich has been our guinea pig. He's been so gracious. We've we've taken his horn and put Neopads in it, so he was one of the early adopters and he's been our test guinea pig. So he gives us a lot of feedback as far as the feel. And I know Rich really enjoys a very firm feeling of a pad. Uh, but yes, the Neo pads with from prior models, they were a little bit softer and now it's a little bit, um, they are a little bit firmer. So I would, um, I would say that, yeah, it is kind of a medium firm uh, felt pad. So uh, Rich asked, will you be at the Sack Symposium in George Mason University, January 12th to 13th? I don't think we'll be there as a company. I hope to be there personally because I always enjoy doing that, going up to those. In fact, that's the area that I'm from, uh, Northern Virginia, land of bad traffic. Um, so I hope to be up there. And yeah, it would be nice if hopefully we can bring up a horn with Neopads. So if you see me wandering around, I may have a horn with Neopads in it. If you ask nice, I'll let you play it. Even if you ask me, I'll still probably let you play it. I don't care. Um, so yes, so there we go. We've installed these. The well, next thing I have to do is basically just put it on to the instrument. Let me just show you real quick. Um, I may not get the bell keys on, but I will put it on the C and the E flat. Right, and that way you guys can kind of see what this looks like. All right. There's my C and my E flat. Again, normally I would use oil and grease and all this stuff, but I again, demonstration purposes. Do as I say, not as I do. Use oil and grease. So. Install. This guy, like so. Engage my springs. You know, like I said, engage, I said, engage my springs. Here we go. It's, it'll get there. Hold on, folks. It's taken me longer to hook this spring than it did to put that pad in. There we go. If I get it from the backside, that sometimes helps. There we go. So now we're in. So let me pop that light back on. And I'll let you guys see. Keep in mind, we didn't do any kind of leveling. We just installed the pad into the pad cup. See if I can get that light all the way down in there. And let's see what our low C looks like. Oh my goodness, we're way too close. Let me back it up, I apologize. So there we are, there's our C key, back it up a little bit more so we can really get a good view. There we are. So here's my, my pad. I'm going to go ahead and knock that to be on level. I'm gonna close the pad slowly. Let's see, and you should see it hits, it's gonna hit on this side over here first, and then it's going to close. And now the next time I put this key down, 
it's completely level. Let me show you again here. I'm going to put it so that it hits heavy right here in the front. Right there, it's hitting and now it's leveling and now it stays level. Okay. Even if I bump that key around, it still stays level. So we built that friction into it. So again, it's, uh, it's not like it's running in flip-flops. You're not going to feel that little bit of an extra step, 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 step. It, as soon as it hits, it levels and now it stays level. So this is great if the instrument does take a hit, okay? Even if I were to move this, in fact, I could do that. I could, let's say if this were a traditional pad, heat it up, level it up, you know, it's level. If I were to move that, the pad would not seal, right? If I were to do that with this Neopad, I could move this like I did right now. Guess what? That pad is still hitting and, and leveling. Guess what? I'm going to move it again. There I go. I just bent it. Still leveling, still moving, all right? So... So you can kind of see how, how easy it is once I've installed the Neopad, there's my E flat right there in the back. Level, okay? Super easy, took all the, the work out of it. Uh, no C, eventually, that's a, great, uh, that's a great comment, Jim, is eventually they will develop a slight impression, okay? Um, there is, I'm not going to say controversy, but I am going to say controversy as far as the thought process of putting a deep seat into a pad. Okay? Some technicians, once they get a pad level, they will heat it up again. They will wedge the pad shut. That puts a very deep seat in it. Um, some technicians will allow that seat to form over time. Okay? With Neopads, because of that pivoting center point, the pressure of the pad coming down has been lessened. So that pad impression is not going to get super, super deep. And we've all seen it where we've taken a pad off. It has a super deep seat or maybe even two seats. Kind of looks like a Venn diagram like this, where it's a double impression. Maybe that pad was in one place, it, it seated, and then that pad moved, and now it created another seat. Well, where those seats intersect right here, that's where you're going to get leaks, all right? So the, the seat with a Neopad does form, but it's very slow to form and it's much less. Okay? It still will seal. Okay? There is some tautness to the leather on top, um, but it's not going to form that super, super deep impression. And another analogy I like to use is like laying on a bed of nails, okay? where your body weight is dispersed much, much bigger on a bed of nails versus just having one nail. Okay? Um, and it's not necessarily, uh, Rick just said, is that because of the stiffer felt? It's not because of the stiffer felt. It's because of the center pressure. Let's get into the, um, the uh, slideshow here because I do have some talking points that I think will really drive this home. Uh, so let me go to my front cam and then let me allow myself to share. Okay. So what I have on the screen here is, there we are. So hopefully everybody can see this. I think I am going to highlight myself for everybody. Ping. Hopefully everybody can see that at the, I think everybody can. All right, cool. Neopads, here we are. Couple installation tips again, just to kind of drive this home. So the very first thing is you wanna prep and clean your pad cup. You can see the pad cup on the left. Man, that's ugly first off. Um, clean that up, especially in the center. Okay? And you can see the pad cup on the right there um, is the way it should be. Okay, cleaning that center portion, cleaning the inside of the rim. The next thing for the sizing tips, you want to measure the pad cup and round down a half millimeter. Okay, so for that proper fit, again, example would be if you have a, maybe you measure that pad cup to be a 34, you're going to go to a 33.5. Now, here's something else to think about. Let's say you measure that pad cup and it's a 34.9. You could probably go with a 34.5. A rule of thumb is to have two millimeters on either side of the pad. 
Okay. We just say five millimeters total. So that gives you enough, so to speak, wiggle room. All right. So you can see the pad on the left, way too big. Traditional pad, that's fine. The pad on the right, that's what we want for our Neo pad. We want that space all the way around it. All right. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to select that spud height that will allow for the correct amount of self-leveling and tilts and pad protrusion. So you can see there to the far left, that's our standard spud. Right in the middle is our medium and then our tall spud. All right. I also gave you that tip of using the flat flute pad washers. Uh, those are also very good to use for extra height. All right. Install Neopads into the cup using the rubber toughened super glue. And go ahead and order yourself a bottle of the rubber tough and super glue. And when you do, also order yourself a bottle of the DD Bonder, because if you're like me, you will get it all over your fingers. Okay? I'm just glad that I haven't glued my fingers shut. Okay? So uh, that's what we're using for the installation process. You notice no heat, no flame, no pad slick, no pad prick. Uh, I don't have to worry about burning lacquer. I don't have to worry about burning materials. Once you install the pad into the pad cup, a Neopad, that's it, all right? Uh, let's see, here we go. Just to kind of reiterate that spud pin and pad slot alignment, the spud is designed to have that pin. And again, that prevents that Neopad from rotating 360 degrees. We don't want that pad to rotate 360 degrees. We develop that pin slot mechanism. You insert that um, that pin directly in that slot. That's going to prevent that rotation. Remember that tip on marking where the slot is on the pad, and then you can line it up with the actual spine. Uh, that way, it's kind of a no-brainer for replacing a neopad with another neopad. Couple things, things you know. Padding saxophone is the majority of the work. A saxophone can play with dents in it. A saxophone can play with noisy keys. A saxophone cannot play if the pads don't seal. So the padding of the saxophone is the majority of that work. That's at least where I think it should be put into. The things you will learn, or really the things you did learn, there is no padding. There's in only installation with Neopad. So once you install that Neopad, we don't have to continue to install that Neopad. All right, next thing. Padding is a black art that takes a long time to learn and a lifetime to master. So the new tech in the shop is probably not going to do the majority of your pad work. That's assuming you're working in a shop with multiple techs. Maybe you're all working together. Maybe you have some kind of, you know, one guy does the the the, the cleaning and another guy does the, the dent work and another guy does the whatever. The new guy is not going to do your padding, right? Probably not, especially if they're getting paid hourly, okay? So... It's one of those things that hopefully you've learned through this Neopad free clinic is learning to install Neopads takes almost no time. It takes me longer to actually describe how to do it than it does to actually just do it, right? So the learning curve is much lower, right? It's not as steep. Uh, you know, a tech that's been doing it for years and years and years and years is at the same advantage of somebody brand new as far as installing Neopad. Now, the techs, Veteran Tech's understanding of how a Neopad functions uh, and the benefits of it may be a little bit higher than the brand new person. But as far as the installation process, level playing field. Okay. Things you know, it is possible to repair the keywork to remarkable tolerances, but leveling the pads to the same tolerances is nearly impossible. And we're talking about like key fitting. All right. Uh, my time here in the Saks Pro Shop, I probably spent most of my time uh, at the key fitting bench. All I did was for 40 hours a week was key fitting. So I have a really good swedging hand. All right. But it's possible to get all the key fitting super tight. Now what we're dealing with with traditional padding is essentially, you know, kind of keeping your fingers crossed and, and heating things up and, and moving and and. It turns basically the things you learned, hopefully after this is fixing a saxophone is no longer a precision key fitting job followed by an arts and crafts project with hot glue and torches okay, where you're moving things around. It's almost like scrapbooking on a saxophone. 
the things you know, padding requires a number of tools. I didn't even put out the tools that I need to do traditional padding. Normally I would have an air torch. Maybe I have a regular torch. I'd have my Z gun. I'd have shellac sticks. I'd have my pad slick set. I have my, my pad irons. I mean, it's all kinds of stuff that you need to do padding. With Neopads, the things you learned was minimal tools are needed for, to install Neopads. I mean, literally it's just this bottle of glue, okay? Uh, hopefully you have a screwdriver to take the key off. That's helpful. A spring hook is also kind of helpful, but I mean, that's it. There's no torch. You notice I never put this torch to the, these pad cups, okay? Unnecessary, unnecessary, okay? Things you know, maybe you don't know this, Shellac is expensive, okay? Shellac is expensive. I saw a, a tech in one of the repair tech forums post a picture uh, of their recent purchase of shellac and it was very expensive. Um, and probably out of a, a standard stick of shellac, uh, you could probably get uh, maybe two repads, two and a half, maybe three if you really are, are kind of stingy with your glue, right? This bottle right here, like I said, 25 repads, entire repads. 25 times whatever, 23 pads, 24 pads on a saxophone, right? So quite a bit with just this one bottle of glue, okay? Things you'll learn, or you did learn, there was no shellac. You notice <laughs> there's not even any shellac on my bench. I don't need it. Throw it away. Get it out of here, okay? Things you know, if the pad hits on the back first, it has a chance of being crushed closed. Remember my little analogy with this guy right here where I showed the pad coming down. And if it does hit in the back, yeah, I can crush it closed. I shouldn't have to, but I can, right? With Neopads, there is no back. There's only center pressure. And that is the other uh, unique feature of Neopads, not just that it levels itself. That's awesome, right? It's that it's center pressure. With a traditional pad coming down like this, I'm going to have more pressure hitting in the back of that pad cup versus the front okay, as this comes down. Okay. If you're a seasoned padder, if you know how to put saxophone pads in, you can use that to your advantage. Like I said, if you're going to err on the one side of it being heavy in the back or heavy in the front, you're going to want it heavy in the back. This, you can crush it closed to make it sealed. This, there's nothing you can do. Okay? That leak in the back is always going to stay there. Okay? But with a Neopad, I have center pressure that comes straight down. No matter what happens, no matter how that key comes down, I can have that key come down like this diagonal because of that center pressure, it's going to level that pad out. Okay? On the other hand, pads that hit on the front first have no chance of sealing properly. You're dead in the water. That's it. So somebody that's maybe doing traditional padding hopefully knows this, realizing, uh-oh, I've got a pad hitting heavy in the front. I got to do something. I either got to bend my key so that it comes down flat, or I got to use a thicker pad so that it comes down flat. But one thing that you learned, hopefully, just like with the other one, there is no front with Neopads, only center pressure. It's not purely determined on this angle now of the key coming down. It's almost as if that pad were coming straight down and again, center pressure from that spud. Leverage is one of those things that when understood by the patter helps to improve the patter's work tremendously, okay? We're talking about it here, this leverage coming down. A patter knows, okay, I'm gonna have it hit maybe a little heavy in the back and then hopefully over time it compresses and then I end up with a nice flat surface, okay? Nice flat pad. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. I think I saw a question. Let's see if I can get to it. Oh, I don't know if I can. Um, it says with Neopads, there is no front, back or sides, center pressure. Can you really see that? We're really trying to drive home the center pressure. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. Combining Neo replacement in a stack with traditional already installed an option. Yes. Okay. What Jim is asking there is, is it okay to mix traditional pads with Neopads? Yes, okay. because the protrusion of a Neopad is very similar to a regular pad. The other thing that I've done, and we've done it with a pro player here in town, is I took his horn and I, well, I gave it back to him, but after I took it, I put Neopads in 
the lowest five keys. So the B flat, the B, the C sharp, C, and then the E flat. Everything else was a traditional glued in pad, right? The nice thing about Neopads is he had tan pads with plastic resos. Neopads matched up perfectly with those. You can't tell what's a standard pad and a Neopad aside from the little sticker, which is why we do this, right? So you know this is a Neopad, right? So, um, but they worked perfectly, okay? It's nice to do the independent keys if you want to kind of get into maybe, maybe I'll do just some Neopads and the other traditional pads. Well, you can do Neopads in the palm keys. You can do Neopads in the bell keys, side keys as well. And then everything else, if you want to do traditional pads, that's on you. Right? But yes, mixing them is very much of an option for neopads and traditional pads. Right? Here we go. Side pressure or torque applied to a pad or nearby keys or an offset touch piece can distort the angle of a pad cup. Don't worry, I'll describe that. Examples would be an offset low D pearl, a low C key, the bis key is a great example, or articulated G sharp. So for the offset D pearl, think of like a tenor sax, like a Mark VI, okay? We have that big pad cup, but then we have that key pearl that's offset, all right? So a lot of times that pad, as you press it down, it wants to kind of naturally bend towards that touch. Well, if I set my pad up to close like this, but as I press that key down, it tilts it, well, then I'm going to have a leak on this side, all right? And it's going to be hitting heavy on this side. Right? So that little bit of a torque you have to think about. Low C key is another great example. It touch pieces all the way over here. This is why a lot of times you'll see double braced arms for some instruments that have low C keys. It's to combat as it comes down this torque or this twist in the mechanism. Right? The bis key is a great example. There are three places on a bis key on a saxophone that you engage it to close it. Okay. If I play regular bis B flat, okay, my finger is now touching the key pearl. That's going to close it. If I play A, that A pearl that goes over top of the bis pad cup, that's going to close it. I also have my one and one B flat, where this arm is going to close it from all the way down here. Okay, so there are three locations on that bis key that I engage it. So I have different ways that that key actually wants to interact and function. When that A pearl closes it down, like when I play C, oh, it's right over top. That's going to be a nice strong connection. When I play it off to that pearl, well, that's an offset pearl. Maybe that pad, as it comes down, it's going to favor the side of where that offset pearl is. All right. When I play my one and one, now I have all the flex that's in that brass key, in, including that arm that comes out. So now that pad's coming down over here, but it's being applied over here and going all the way up. So there are three locations. With the traditional pad, you maybe have to think about, okay, maybe that player doesn't use one and one. I'm not gonna focus so much on pressing that down. Maybe he plays a lot of bis B flat. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that when he presses that bis B flat and that, that pearl comes down, that that pad is maybe compensated to come down a little tilted. Okay, so it's completely level. With neo pads, doesn't need to worry. Don't need to worry about it. Doesn't matter where I engage that key because of that center pressure being pressed in the center, that is where that pressure is coming from, okay? It's not coming from that offset pearl or this lever that's all the way down here. It's pressing this down, it's being transferred and it's going right to that center and then that's what's pressing the pad down. Even pressure all the way around. It's not heavy in the back, it's not heavy off to the side, even pressure, center pressure. That's what it is. So hopefully after my long rambling of that, you just learned that there's no side or torque issue with Neopads, only center pressure. I'm gonna get a t-shirt that's made that says only center pressure, okay? My Neo shirt, patent pending on that. Rich, get on that, quick. Things you know, proper sealing is the most important aspect of saxophone repair. Fight me on that if you don't think that's true. All right, proper pad sealing. Like I said, a pad can play if I don't have material on my palm D and it's making the clacking sound, it's just loud, all right? Uh, if I have a dent in the bell, well, it's just a dent, all right? But if I don't have a pad that seals, that instrument is dead in the water. There's no function to it, all right? So the, hopefully the thing you learned is neopads seal faster, 
they seal better and for longer, right? Because of that center pressure, because of that even pressure all the way around, okay? That pad impression is not going to get heavier in one spot and the other, and it's going to wear evenly. Next. Oh, sometimes... Cleaning a nasty low E-flat pad is quicker and cheaper than installing a new one. Maybe it's not the right thing to do, but it is quicker and cheaper. All right? The things you learn is installing a new uh, low E-flat pad in a Neopad, it makes you less time than cleaning the old one. All right? So much easier. All right? Now I don't hesitate when it comes to changing a Neopad. If it were traditional pads, it's like, oh man, I got to change this pad Oh. Oh, God, I got to take it out. I got to make sure I don't burn the lacquer. I got to scrape all that old shellac out. Who knows what's behind there? I got to clean all that out. Okay, I got to take out a pad. I got to get one that's the right size. Okay, if it's too thin, I got to change. Okay, uh, it's just a lot of work. Changing the E-flat pad is super easy with Neopads. In fact, all of them, right? I still remember the very first time I was handed a prototype set of Neopads and I was tasked to install them into an instrument, okay? I, took a horn, I put it in, and I installed all the Neopads into the pad cups, I assembled everything, I put the light in it, and I closed it, and I go, well, I guess I'm done. I guess I can leave early for the day, because uh, that was it. That was it. Uh, it wasn't installation after installation, right? Things you know, padding could be a relaxing job, but it takes so much time and is seldom fun. It's one of those things that you kind of can get in that we have in the Saks Pro Shop, we have our padding room, which is a separate room. I can go in there, I can dim all the lights, which helps me see the light, the leak light a lot better. And it's kind of one of those Zen things you can kind of get into it. But a lot of times it's not really fun. Okay? When you're sitting here working, it's getting frustrating. Pads not sealing, it's doing this, you're burning materials, things are happening. The things you learn with Neopads is, padding with Neopads is fun. Okay? I enjoy when I have to put Neopads in because I know, boom, it's going to be a quick, easy job and they're going to work. All right. Here it is. After you install a pad into a pad cup, again with traditional pads, after you install it into the pad cup, you have to spend time leveling that pad over the tone hole. Of course. The things you learn is here it is. Once you install a Neopad, you're done. There is no installation after installation. I think over you know a few years, 20, 15, 30 years, maybe we'll have more acceptance of Neopads or different types of a self-leveling pad. And we'll think back, it's like, you remember when we used to glue in pads? You know, you remember how you used to glue in, they would stay there? Just like, you remember when you used to have a, a cord for your phone and you used to have to stay close to it? Now we're just out walking around with our cell phones, all right? So questions. Any questions? We do have a few minutes left. I'd be more than happy to take any questions. I'll exit out of that. I hope this was informative for you all. Uh, I hope you give Neopads a shot. Uh, it was one of those things that here in the Saks Pro Shop, we can be skeptical about things, you know, like with, with most things. So when we had Neopads and we were working on them, there was some skepticism built into that. Ah, is this pad really going to seal itself? Is it really going to level itself? And like I said, when I first put that prototype set in, I popped the light in and I looked at it and it was like, yeah, they work. It's just real matter of fact. They work. Okay. Uh, yes. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Rich, you want to jump on? Rich, are you still awake? Rich. Oh, he's here. He's here. He's there. Oh, wait a second. I think we get, did we get a question? Did we get a question? Uh, let's see here. You seem to use more of the medium and tall spuds than the standard spuds. Is that typical? It can be. Yes. Uh, that's a good question. I would, if you're thinking about getting the Neopads, definitely get the spud kit. And that is because of the depth of the pad cups. Some of the more modern horns like Selmer's do tend to be a little bit deeper. Um, I think I have some of these examples here, like uh, one of my examples, this guy here was meant to depict like a con, uh, uh, old con, like a 10M, 6M, 12M, whatever. This was more like a standard, you know, saxophone pad cup. So you can see a slight difference in the size. Um, so that does tend to be somewhat typical. Um, the other thing you could do is just get the regular Neopads and then just use the pad flute washers and customize your own thickness. 
All right. Uh, let's see, another question was with traditional pads, I worry about shellac. I have to play outdoors and gig. Sun and neopads is just no longer a concern. It's not really. Um, like I said, I we never in our testing with our pad whacker of that bottom boom, 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 boom. I mean, it's a violent choo, 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 choo. you can hear it. We have to put it in our soundproof practice room um, because they're really coming down. We haven't had it where the, the glue has sheared off or, or loosened. Uh, we haven't had it where a pad has been pulled out of the spud. Uh, and we've tested it under uh, different conditions as well. We'll go in and we'll spray down the instrument with water, okay, to, to mimic, you know, the condensation and moisture and all this. We actually had the mechanism fail before the pad failed. There, the, the brass actually broke. There was a part in there where it broke before the actual pad itself failed. So um, so it is a very strong, like I said, we did, did our, our research as far as um, what type of adhesive to use, rubber toughened glue, um, because of that rubber being infused within that, that CA glue, it does give it a little bit of uh, shock absorption. Okay. With traditional uh, super glue, which is why I don't ever really use it to put in like key pearls, it tends to, if it gets a hard hit, it will want to shatter and fracture. Okay. It doesn't really happen with the rubber toughened super glue. Uh, uh, but great question. Great question. Any other questions, comments, concerns? I hope you guys really give these a shot. Uh, like I said, try them out. You don't have to put it in the entire instrument. You can mix and match. Oh, thank you, Jim. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions, comments, concerns, contemplations, contentments? You guys have been awesome. Really great questions, by the way. Really, really great questions. Um, you know, like I said, I tried to cover all the ones that we have been typically getting. And the, the typical questions are, does it come with different types of resins? Okay. And like I said, not right now. Uh, that is something that eventually we're going to work towards. But for right now, we just wanted to give it the one option, uh, which is the tan with the um, plastic resos. Um, who knows? Eventually, we may offer it in different types of leathers, uh, but we'll see. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, yes. Anything else? Add Rich, do you want to add in? Do you want to give people a, a, a summary, a wrap up of they want to get those discounts? how to do it, what to do. There's Rich. Let me spotlight him. Let's see if I can spotlight him. Spotlight for everybody. You're on the spotlight, Rich. Let's go. Uh, there's not much to add. Just remember that tomorrow is Friday the 8th and you can get 30% off whether you order a pad set and I'll give you an extra 10% off. Or if you order individual pads, it'll be 30% off your order. There were two ways to do it. You can either place your order and I'll get you a refund in the, in the uh, discount. And then the other one is to just place your order and select... Uh, check out with money order and say, hey, I want to take advantage of the, uh, the discount for taking the free meal pads clinic. Uh, the other option was you can get 20% off any of the single meal pad orders or accessories until the 31st. And then pad sets are on sale 20% off through the end of the month as well. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll email everyone that as well, too. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you, Rich. I'm removing you. your spotlight but not out of my heart. You're still in the spotlight of my heart. So awesome. Anything else to add? Any other questions, comments, concerns? Thank you guys so much for attending. Uh, if there are no questions, I think I'll probably stop the recording here. And like I said, what we'll plan on doing is sending you guys a, um, sending you all a, uh, a link. Uh, this is going to be, it's a cloud recording. Uh, so it'll send you a link and you'll be able to watch this. I think it's going to be available for maybe like 30 days afterwards. We'll maybe change that to maybe make it available longer if you need to go back and review any of this information. But you also have our emails, Ryan, R-Y-A-N, Music Medic. If you have any technical questions on, you know, uh, Ryan, what type of glue do I use? Well, I'm going to tell you, use this. Uh, but any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. If you have any questions about purchasing and want to use the discounts that Rich has mentioned today, you can email him, Rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com, uh, or you can go with Leroy as well, L-E-R-O-Y, at musicmedic.com. And e either one of those guys will be able to help you out. Um, you can uh, also email me. I'll be happy to help you out as well. Uh, and I think that is about it. We're all good to go. Fantastic. Let me go ahead and stop this recording. Where is it? It's here somewhere. I'm stopping it.
Here we go. And recording is stopped.